Hi, and welcome to Priestess Entrepreneur Kitchen Conversations. I'm your host, Cindy Morris. Priestess Entrepreneur Kitchen Conversations is a forum for women to talk about business and the business of life. Now, you may wonder what a Priestess Entrepreneur is. A Priestess Entrepreneur is a woman who embraces the courage and vision of the entrepreneurial spirit with the guidance of her own divine feminine voice. So, being a priestess entrepreneur can really empower you in your business and the business of your life. Today we have a lovely priestess entrepreneur with us, Peggy Kieringer. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am going to have to read your title because it's okay. long and it's a mouthful, <laughs> but I want to say it right. Peggy is a certified identity theft risk management specialist. Uh, that just freaks me out when I hear that. Uh, and I know that uh, identity theft is a very big issue and uh, I'd say I'm probably like a lot of people, I almost don't want to know about it. But of course, as a priestess entrepreneur, I have to know about it because it's something that's going to affect uh, my life and my business. So um, tell me a little bit about what identity theft is. What okay. is that? It basically is when someone would use your information, whether it would be your social security number, or maybe a date of birth, driver's license number, financial information, they would take that and use it as their own, which not only messes with you and your financial life, but, but it can actually um, impede your integrity as an individual. So how, how would they access that information? Well, what most people don't realize is that identity theft number one is expected to double this year. Last year, one in six people were affected, according to the Federal Trade Commission, but one in three are expected to be hit this year. Wow. And it's really about technology. Yeah. The technology and the security of it, it just isn't what it needs to be in order to protect the data that's out there. For example, we're all in thousands of databases that are updated every single day, and we have no way to safeguard that information. We have no way to protect that. How do we get into <clears throat> those databanks, just like because we have bank accounts or what absolutely we're... everything that we do from the time we're born we get assigned a social security number we go to medical doctors we go to dentists we file tax returns you name it we've done it bought houses we have deeds those kinds of things insurance records and what happens is that all of the information is automatically shared sold or traded within companies within the United States. Go down the list of what are the different kinds of sure. identity theft. It's interesting because most people just don't know what they don't know about identity theft and so until education happens they aren't aware of what a big epidemic it is. It's actually surpassed drug trafficking by trade as the number one white collar crime today so wow. and most people just don't know that but the very first form is financial and that is the form that we think of the most because that's what we see in the news, that's what we read about in the paper, sure. the stories where someone's a credit card was stolen and, and abused or not even maybe left their possession but may just have been uh, recreated. Um, Taken off a, a receipt absolutely. you mean, No, or... not, um, not actually on a receipt because they're only allowed to print the last four digits oh. of the card these days as of a couple years ago, but if a data breach occurs, um, what these criminals have found they could do, they're very smart individuals and, of course. <laughs> and they know that if they breach a database they can get thousands of people's worth of information instead of so, one or two. So for instance, uh, if you are buying something online, let's say through, uh, through an online company and your credit card gets put there, is that what you mean by breaking that, be that a, database? That could be one place, absolutely. And with technology being the way it is, anyone that knows what they're doing can get into those secure, even right. though they may not be totally secure sites and download information. Okay, so it seems like the credit card, yes, I mean that I can actually even understand and it feels like that's somewhat, you can manage that because usually the credit card company will call you if yes. you're, if, if all of a sudden there's strange charges or out of your normal buying pattern and so you, you cancel the card, you start again. Exactly. Okay, so that, but I, I feel like 
you know, that there are other things going on that aren't easy to handle like that. That's very so, true. So, so that's the first. So that's the easiest to fix. That's the easiest because it's the most obvious mm -hmm. and um, seems like there's some level of responsibility coming from the banks and or credit card companies. Absolutely. And, and they are watching much more they're closely watching. now because it's costing them billions of dollars sure. annually. So financial comprises the credit cards, the bank accounts, and the debit cards. Right. The biggest area right now is called criminal or character identity theft. And that's where someone would actually commit a criminal act in your name. So, for example, I know a woman that had someone purchase, unbeknownst to her, a Cadillac Escalade in her name, and they used the vehicle in a drive-by shooting that resulted in a death. Well, of course, the police are tracing the vehicle that's registered in her name So back how to her. could they have registered, and how does that happen, that they could register? You can do that with two forms of ID, with a Social oh. Security number and maybe a state ID or a driver's license wow. in her so name. They, so they fabricated it? or yes, they, they fabricated absolutely. It. Very easy to do. Yes. Equipment you can purchase at Office Max. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. You know, I mean, they've been making fake money for years, IDs and fake IDs fake for IDs years. For college I mean, students, that's, right? <laughs> that's kind of a given. Absolutely. Okay, so that, that feels very serious. That so. is very serious, and that yeah. is criminal. Yeah. The third area is medical, and this is actually the fastest growing area. And, and what is that? This is where someone would use your health insurance information as their own. There's a lot of people in our society that don't have health insurance, can't Absolutely. afford it, right. um, but they need it. Uh, here's a great example. I know a, a man here in Evergreen, Colorado, that had someone check into a local Littleton hospital in his name and had some major surgery done, $42,000 worth of surgery. He died after he had the surgery, but now, almost four years later, the real guy is fighting to stay out of bankruptcy. So for a, a surgery he never had. Exactly. That was listed under his name. Exactly. So it raises havoc with your insurance company. Oh my God, that is just crazy. It is wow. crazy. Crazier than that, though, and why it's my personal favorite as far as being the worst kind is that it can be fatal in the wrong situation for the simple fact that it changes your medical records. Okay. So if, if you were to have gotten in a car accident and couldn't speak for the himself, real person. the real person, right. they would have treated him as the person that was last oh, in his right. medical file, which could be a different blood type, he may be a diabetic, oh, sure. those or kinds allergic of things, to so allergic certain to medication. Drugs or, oh, that Absolutely. is just... So, um, any other types? There are actually three other types. Um, Social Security is a very big one as well because we have a lot of folks in our society that are either trying to avoid garnishments on their wages, maybe they don't want to pay taxes, or maybe they don't have a good valid Social Security number to work in this country, and so they have to have one. Um, there are child's, our children's identities are are being used for this, um, which raises havoc on their records. Sure. They don't know anything's going on until they're 18 when they start applying for credit cards and student loans and those kinds of things, which can be a nightmare in that situation. Right. Um, right. The interesting thing about identity is that since it's a black market, it gets bought and sold. And since the inventory of identity never goes away, it can be sold, bought and sold over and over and over again. So multiple people in multiple locations can be using the same person's information. Right. I know a woman that has over 80 people using her social security number to work. Oh, the fifth area okay. is driver's license, and that's where someone would actually get a state ID or a driver's license with their photo and your information. So you can do anything with a good valid ID, as sure. we talked about before. Sure. It may be DUIs, speeding tickets, it may be, right. I know a gal here in the Denver area that had prostitution being committed in her name. Every time this young lady got picked up for prostitution, she would show an ID exactly. that had her information on it instead of her own. And then yeah. the sixth area is called synthetic identity theft. And that is the most difficult to fix because what they do is they'll take a piece of each of those areas oh. and make up a whole new person that doesn't really exist. A composite exist. person. Exactly. Wow. So it's a fictitious person. It's a person on paper, but it's not a real person. Right. So you have pieces, maybe my social security number, someone else's health insurance information, your driver's license number, you know, and the list goes on and on. Wow. Well, and that feels like impossible to, it, it, to kind it's of break It's very challenging that. without a, without a licensed private investigator to help you through that situation.